Sarah's um, thing. One minute of
Can we do this one more time? So. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, okay, please repeat after me. I say your name. I, Perry Cheshire. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The Office of Legislative Affairs Chair. The Office of Legislative Affairs Chair. And to protect at all times the welfare of the student body. And to protect at all times the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations between the students. And to promote good relations between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. <laughs> Yes. No. Number one. What? You get stuck by the tree? Uh, somebody's a big tree. Yeah. I know this tree is here. Thank you. Oh, you just got to listen to your job. I should. That's where you are. Okay. Guys, we are making great time. Uh, next up is the, uh, we're actually right on the schedule. Next up is uh, the confirmation of uh, Michael Poland or Poland? Poland. Poland uh, for Honor Student Council Liaison. So, Chair Miller, if you want to present him. Um, yeah. Um, guys, this is uh, Michael Poland, and he is in Honor Student Council. And uh, essentially, he's going to be a liaison between. Uh, Student Senate and Honor Student Council. Um, and I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about uh, what Honor Student Council does and what he wants to do. So, Honor Student Council does a few things for the Honor Student Body at AM. We put on programming, organize activities, lectures, that sort of thing. But more importantly, we're also the representative and leadership body for Honor Students, both in University Honors and in College and Departmental Honors programs. <laughs> So this year, we're making an effort to better represent the honor student body, and as part of that, um, we looked at getting a liaison with the uh, Student Senate to open up channels of communication between what the Student Senate's doing and uh, what HSC is doing. Um, so this year, I hope that you know over the, over the next several months, I can exchange ideas and opinions between Student Senate and HSC, and, and hopefully, um, Kind of support each other and, and mix mix some ideas. So that's that. I, uh, are there any questions for Mr. Poland? Chair Harris. Uh, Jody Harris, Local Regulation. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, what's just something that you see as a, a positive uh, outcome uh, of this relationship? So one of the positive outcomes would be where if some academic affairs issue or some other issue comes before student senate or is brought up that strongly impacts honor students, that I could bring that to honor student council. I could open it up for discussion, try and gather opinion from honor students and bring it back here and let you guys know how honor students feel about an issue and how, how they would like people to vote. So that, maybe not a specific issue, but that's kind of the action that I would consider successful. Thanks. Are there any further questions? Seeing none, we will now move to a period of debate. Um, so if you could please stay outside. All right, do I see any debate against? So seeing none, the chair means debate one sided, and we will now move to a period of voting. Is there a motion for one so? I thought it would stop on that. The voice vote has been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Okay, there is a nay vote. So oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's not a nay vote. Uh, so that passes. All in favor of confirming Mr. Poland for honor student council liaison, please say aye. 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 Those, please say nay. And if the chair of the ayes have it, let's bring him back in. I'm 
Michael Thorne to solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The Office of Honor Student Council Liaison. The Office of Honor Student Council Liaison. And to protect at all times the welfare of the student body. And to protect at all times the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations between the students. And to promote good relations between the students and those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, uh, we will now move into the confirmation of uh, Chelsea Liu for Chief Justice of the Judicial Court. So, um, is, that is a five minute presentation, correct? Yes. Okay, so with that, uh, the student body president and Mrs. Liu, Justice Liu, let's get started. Yes. All right. Hey. All right, guys, I'm so pumped up to bring Chelsea Lou to you guys tonight. Uh, we did the interviews last week, and uh, we had three really outstanding uh, applicants. Uh, but after putting together charts and looking at all the characteristics and ideas, we decided that, uh, and, and it was unanimous, that Chelsea was for sure uh, going to be the best. And so uh, we'd like to talk about a few of those reasons, and then I'd love to give Chelsea a chance to talk to you guys. Um, she talked about in her interview this idea of being a leader among equals, and, and I thought that that was really unique, her perspective on that. She knew that although she was the, the will be the chief justice, uh, she feels that she doesn't have any more say than any of the other justices, which I think is really unique and be really conducive to a strong team, uh, which I think is all we can ask for in a chief justice, somebody who will be able to lead a strong team. Um, we liked uh, the way that she has chosen to serve, and we think that that characteristic is going to make a really strong Chief Justice. The way that she's uh, participated in CASA, which is, um, it, which is a, a really difficult program, and, 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 and I believe she said she's one of the youngest people in, in CASA. Um, and so basically she gets to uh, defend, uh, what is it, abused, abused or neglected child, which, uh, which is a huge responsibility. And we think that, that that not only shows her desire to serve, but uh, her ability to take on large responsibilities as well. Um, she she has a lot of respect for the Constitution, and uh, this is really what set her apart from all the other candidates more than anything else. Was the idea that she had uh, to one um, make judicial court professional by having consistent meetings, but at the beginning to have meetings where they're able to specifically discuss the Constitution. Because Chelsea Lou believes that the judicial court should rule solely based on the Constitution. And I think that that's something that all you guys agree with. And, uh, and I'm glad to have Chief Justice who agrees with that. And then uh, she's concerned about the students. She wants to serve students. And that's what we're all here to do. Uh, she wants to not only uh, serve student government, but wants to reach out and offer services of judicial court. Uh, to organizations inside and outside of uh, student government in whatever way they see fit. Uh, Chelsea, you're an outstanding applicant, and, and I'd love for you to take it over from you. Yeah, two minutes. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Chelsea. I'm a political science and philosophy major. Um, I'm a senior. Um, just, I guess, background. Um, I'm also involved with Free Law Society, but that's um, subsidiary. Um, Aggie Vig is something I do as well, and um, that. I'm sure y'all heard of it. It's big brothers, big sisters. Um, my big sister and my sister, my little is like 15 years old, so she's really cool. Um, and then I'll go to this. Um, so as Mr. Claybrook had spoke about, is I really want the J Court to come together and understand what the Constitution means prior to any cases that we get. And the primary reason for that is um, just based on my understanding of what happened last year with some of the cases, I would like to see less confusion um, on what we think the Constitution means in context, and I think it's really important that before we have details of a case, we understand what an article means. Um, so that's <coughs> the educational meetings that J-Court would have, I guess. Um, another thing is I really would like to see an increase in the professionalism in J-Court, um, and in that is organizing a consistent schedule, that being that last year, I think a lot of times they just hit the ground running, and not that that's 
not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but I would like to see consistency only because I think when people are in a context of professionalism, it, it causes them to hold each other accountable because they see the weight of what they're doing. And I think it's obviously really important to the justices that we all realize that we have to be impartial and we have to view the Constitution as crime. Um, another thing, I guess I... Uh, uh, one more thing um, I, I really want to do with J-Court is I was looking through the old um, courts, I suppose, um, and last year with the Roe Court, there were 10 cases, and then the year prior to that, they had three cases. Um, and of course, like I've only been here four years, so I don't know, relatively speaking, if 10 is a lot or if 3 is a lot or what that is. But to me, having only 3 or 10 is, in one way or another, indicative that maybe the student body and those involved in the SGA aren't as aware of what they can bring to J-Court. And the purpose isn't to make more problems, but it's just to help people realize what their rights are as students. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for uh, either of these beginning of the center or so? Uh, Senator Russo off campus. Um, what I wanted to ask is, is what is your preferred method of judicial interpretation? Um, I think it's important to take it at face value of what it is and take away. Do you mean like the actual, like whether it's a contextualist or? That's correct. Okay. Um, okay. Um, for me, I think that you just do strict text. Um, you don't take your personal knowledge, obviously, you don't take the history of what's necessarily behind it. Um, you just take it for what it is, and I don't know if that's like a good enough answer um, to you. You seem skeptical. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Okay, um, does that, I mean, I don't know if that's an adequate answer for you, but to me it's just strict interpretation. Yeah, right I, I think she touched on that really well with, with uh, explaining just how much of a purpose she sees in reviewing the Constitution, having a mutual understanding as a judicial court of how it should be interpreted. Um, because it, it is very clear, and if they're able to review that, they'll be much more efficient as a court. And so uh, strict constitutional uh, interpretation and decisions is, is for sure what she's been talking about time and time again. Okay, thank you. Okay, so one of the things that were contested last semester when the Senate did not confirm the justices was the issue of separation of powers, correct? So how do you feel in regards to a line item line item veto mentioned in Article 8, Section 3, subsection C? And how would you justify your answer with real ordinance such as Supreme Court? Okay, oh, can I reference it really quickly? Just what it said in our article? Yeah, I think it just mentions the line I need to end. Just yeah, that it to give a uh, uh, student president the power to veto just uh, so that line sure. in regards to the body. Um, so you just want to know what I think of the line I need to Yes, how, how do you feel about that in regards to? The separation of powers issue, and if you could back her up with me. Okay. Um, so, 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 you're right. Uh, to me, line item vetoes, to one extent, do cross that line of separation um, because you're allowing the president or executive branch to have more weight in a way to pick and choose what they want to put in and take out. Um, which is somewhat worrisome because you can't assume that they're justified that we would like to think they are. And for most of the time, I'm assuming that our presidents here are. Um, but that would not make me uncomfortable, uh, but I'm not strong, in, a strong believer, I guess, in the line item videos. Um, uh, there's one other question, so I'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, Senator, Chair Cheshire. I'll yield to the Okay, so. Basic concept: Would you rule it constitutional or unconstitutional? Wait, would you what? Would you rule if uh, the line? Yeah, yeah would you rule constitutional or unconstitutional? Yeah, I don't even know the person who said what. If let's say it is this in our like in the A and M context, yes. A and M context. If you had to decide, maybe you can support. Uh, would you rule it constitutional or unconstitutional? According, so you're asking if the line out of veto at the A and M is unconstitutional according to our constitution? Yeah, which you yeah. 
Okay. Um, I mean, it's in our constitution, so I couldn't say it's unconstitutional. <coughs> that would be like a paradox in what it means to be constitutional. Um, if it's in there, specifically. Okay, so it's not in our, in these yeah. sections. Yeah. Um, I would feel deeming it unconstitutional would be too crude. So, constitutional. Whether or not I'm not confident in it, I still think it's constitutional. Is that, yeah, is that an answer? Sure. Okay. Uh, Senator Russo. Um, can I provide a little bit of uh, preface, or can I preface the question? Um, I, I guess the one thing uh, with the previous question is, I don't know if this has been overturned by by another case or not, but. Um, when Joey Reed was uh, the Supreme, or I'm sorry, the Chief Justice of the J Court a couple of years ago, he had said something to the effect that he ruled that he had the power to rule parts of the Constitution unconstitutional. So I guess where I'm going here is, is how much have you studied up on uh, like the case law at A&M and the previous precedents that's been set by previous J Courts, and how important is that to you when making your decision? Sure. Um, I looked on the website a couple weeks ago. Um, there's not like a whole lot, so I don't know if I was looking at the wrong website, but there are probably like 10. And I looked at the most recent ones. I looked at like I think, two or three of the previous ones. Um, to me, obviously, precedent is important because um, it, it gives you insight on why people believe they did at that moment in time uh, with that context of the case. But I think constantly referring to the Constitution, just as the Constitution outside of that precedent is more important. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Chair right. Cheshire. Uh, Chair Cheshire, let's play Could you cite maybe uh, one decision that you agree with and one that you disagree with and, and why? Uh, if, if you don't have any a and ones, Supreme Court ones will suffice. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let me actually. No, um, what, so, what do you mean that I agree? Like, agree with how they interpret the Constitution, or how they take it, or a decision that you agree with the court on and why, or agree. disagree and disagree with the court. On. Okay. Um, well, it's not okay. So, I'm going to take the most recent one, and this might be really dangerous water for me to turn in. Uh, but the election case, which I know is like extremely sensitive especially for a lot of people in this room. Um, in that case, what bothered me the most was that I think it was unclear as to why specifically the court decided what they did. Um, and I'm not saying that I disagree with them, so this might not be like an adequate answer for you. But to me, I didn't understand why they chose what they did. And that's not because they didn't understand their reasoning, but because I didn't think it was thorough. Um, in their explanation and on their opinion that I read. Um, oh, okay. Hi, so uh, that concludes the motion. I'm going to extend your name. The motion is for the Senate period for action and answer. And second, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. <coughs> nay. And if you need the chair, the ayes have it. So we, will, we now have five more minutes for questions and answers, starting with Senator Bryson. Senator Bryson, off can or um, College of Science. Sorry, um, I was going to follow up uh, what uh, Chair Cashier was talking about. Um, what case were you referring to, and in, in a little bit more detail on which one you were just talking about? Okay, um, I guess the one I was just most recently referring to is the case where you guys, well, J Court decided about the budget of elections. Um, and like I said, and maybe that's a bad example because I didn't have a disagree or agree with that. But to me, it wasn't clear why they chose why they, what they did. Um, and to me, that's something that shouldn't have been a problem to begin with, um, which is why I like the idea of J Court coming together and defining, or defining, but understanding the Constitution together, whether we understand it from different points of view or not, but still understanding what it means in a steadfast, continuous way. Um, does that? Yes, that was. Thank you.
I, Chair Harris, two years, rules and regulations. There was a case, and it was no long time ago, uh, it was where the judicial court actually threw senators out of the Senate after they had been sworn in. Uh, and I was just wondering kind of what your thoughts of that was as far as, you know, uh, uh, checks and balances and stuff. Sure. Yeah, could I, what was, there, what was the reason? It was, uh, there was a long deal for the election. They, uh, so after the fact, anchor product, or yes. they were addressed originally? Uh, point of information, yes. Mr. Speaker. Um, could you give us some context on the situation that's being cited right now, just for clarity? Okay, so, so that was actually the case where I was the descendant. Uh, and, and what had happened was there was an error in the vacancy process. And so uh, we used to have applications for vacancies. We now have elections. But back when we had applications, uh, part of the interview was that we're on. There were not enough officers in the room. And so a, a senator who did not, or a, an individual who did not get a seat through that process sued to overturn the entire process. After they did, after the the individuals chosen to be sworn in, and he succeeded, and uh, and so the process had to be repeated, uh, and, and those individuals were removed from the Senate after that happened. Uh, so why wasn't he present? Just I don't know. Okay. Uh, why were there not enough officers? Well, right. So was he? So this person was confirmed, and then the person who was missing at the time. There had to be three officers in the room at the time of the interviews, and we were under the impression that the executive director of operations happens on. This is uh, getting kind of far, but that's the gist of what happened. So, Scott, just for her clarification, because I, I hear a confusion in what y'all are saying, um, the individual who was bringing the case forward was not Mr. He wasn't one of the right. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, my intuition tells me that that's not okay. But at the same time, part of me feels like maybe I don't have a thorough understanding of what the case was. And I'd also like to, as of right now, I'm not like fully confident in what our Constitution would say about that. So I don't want to give you my fortune, like if that, if that were happening this year, what I would say about it. <laughs> I don't want to give you anything like that. But my intuition tells me that that's not okay, but I don't think I have a thorough understanding of it right now. So, but. <laughs> Uh, Senator Heisel. Lori Heisel off campus. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say that I think getting together and discussing the context of the Constitution of 40 year pieces um, is a really great idea, but obviously there are different opinions and there's going to be dissent. So uh, what, are, what are the steps that you plan to take to alleviate that or uh, reach some conclusions about uh, what you determine the actual meaning? Right. Um, the point isn't the point of those to me isn't to have like a collective agreement because that's the whole point of having nine is that you have that varying opinion. Um, and it, I think I would be remiss to think that it'd be a good idea to go in with having the same um, idea for everything because that would seem I don't know that just would lack purpose of nine. Um, so I guess to alleviate in the sense of not having like completely opposing ideas of what it means. Um, I would like to think that with the nine that we have in this, well, okay, the nine that we have, I would like to think have reason enough that the bounds within what we think it means is acceptable and that they're not like complete polar opposites. But in the event that that would be the case, because I can't rule it out, you know, um, I guess we would just have to discuss it until we found and that might be time consuming but necessary because I think for me the reason the reason why it's like so important is because I don't think that when cases come across that it should be a problem that the J court doesn't understand what we should do. Um, and that the point of time con like consuming like constitutional inter interpretation should be at these moments, not when there's a case in front of us. Because that gives detail and context and it's hard to be it's hard to think of the Constitution when you have details surrounding it. Um, that, thank you. Well, one thing that she said in, in the interview is that uh, the best decisions are often the five four decisions because they're really well thought through and, and, uh, and well discussed. And so I think that also applies 
uh, in this situation. All right, uh, the next question is to speak with others. Okay. okay, first of all, I wanted to clarify the second question because I got confused and I explained it to you and you very in the wrong way. Okay, what I meant with the second question, since at the beginning I asked to parallel with both real world uh, events like, such as Supreme Court cases, my second question was kind of going to where um, you would explain your opinion on I'm just going to the case of Clinton B. Studio New York. Okay, okay. And uh, how you feel about that and how it would relate to the one that we do have in the Constitution. Okay, well, do you want to. Okay, so how do you want me to compare the two? Because to me, well, the, we'll deal with blind well, All right, the Constitution, but, we have a line item veto in that article that I mentioned. And in the real world, in that case, line item veto was discussed. So it's just. Well, um, I think you feel about the majority of the countries and how would you relate it to if there was there, yeah. Okay, um, I think the two to me, um, I understand what you're saying about them being a lot alike. Um, at the same time, to me, they're not um, comparable. Um, and I'm not, I understand what you're asking, um, <coughs> but our Constitution is different from the U.S. Constitution. Um, and, I mean, obviously. Um, so I don't really, so you're wanting me to just compare? Like if, if that was the case, the same case happened here, how I would, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know the question. Yeah, I'm really bad. I don't know any of these surprises. Yeah, I was just wondering a little bit more about your <clears throat> personal opinion on those cases. I know that you know the case, but maybe we took us last year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was just wondering, but that's fine. Okay, well, I'll, I'm going to draw Okay, I see. Yeah. All right. With 44 seconds remaining, the next question goes to the chair, Chair Shire. Um, Mr. Speaker, I move to extend debate by five minutes. No Q and A. Q and A. Okay. Uh, our motion is made to, to extend Q and A by five minutes. It has been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All in favor, say nay. Nay. If you're the chair, that motion fails. So okay. 45 seconds. Uh, in 44 seconds, uh, could you actually answer my earlier question and come up with? Uh, one case that you agree with, maybe, and one case that you disagree with in either our own J Court or in an actual Supreme Court. Can I go like really far back? Because my favorite yes. case is like ancient. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, my favorite case is actually, and I don't know if this is okay, but it's not. It wasn't in America. It was in England, um, and it was with Lord Mansfield, and it had to do with slavery. And later, it was like referred to in the Dred Scott case. Um, but what happened in this case was that. This, literally the facts between the Dred Scott case and this case were like pretty much the exact same, except in England the slave was free and then obviously in Dred Scott case he was not. Um, but in this case, Lord Mansfield is my like my all-time favorite quote, okay, so nerdy of me, all-time favorite, is he, it's like in Latin, so I'm not going to say it in Latin, but it's, um, let justice be done and the heavens may fall. And that was his response to a lot of the people had, um, on the defense, had said, if you make him free, there's going to be like a slavery, like uproar, and they're all going to come at you, and they're all just going to kill everybody. Like really crude. Um, oh. <laughs> um, and so with that, um, I like that because it held that justice is more supreme than what the people like deemed to be true. When in the long run, it wouldn't. Like I don't think anyone in this room would say that that was a fair argument. Um, and if you do, that's fine. Um, but to me, that really gave a prime example of the judicial court being separate from like public reaction. So thank you, both of you. We will now move into a period of debate. So. Do I see any debate against? Sarah Woolsey? Yeah. Uh, Sarah Woolsey, your side. Um, that was a good presentation with the assistance of uh, President Pepper. But something that I missed in the presentation was uh, where her leadership qualifications were. Um, this is the the head of the third branch of the student government, and I really missed any 
good leadership qualities. So uh, I didn't see any, and so that just doesn't strike me as a great person to have leading the other branch of student government. So I yield to sir, our chair, Cheshire. Uh, chair Cheshire, legislative affairs. Um, I don't, I'd like to argue against Chelsea Lloyd because I don't really think that she adequately answered any of, any of the questions. I think that she danced around the issues and tried to pretend that she was knowledgeable when it, it seemed like she hadn't read any of the prior cases for any idea of precedent. It seemed like she didn't even know any constitutional thing. And she called herself a strict uh, interpretationist and incited a board and courts idea. And then thought that a line item veto would have been okay in a strict interpretation. When, as my understanding, when a legislature makes a law and then a executive branch enforces the law, a line item veto is writing a law. So thus it is not uh, legal under any constitution. And with that, I yield to anyone? Anyone? I yield to the floor. All right. Uh, speaking in favor of Chair Harris. Uh, howdy. 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 Uh, you know, I really tried to come into this uh, with uh, with no just. I, I wanted to ask questions, hear answers to questions, watch the presentation, and uh, and kind of make my mind up, and, uh, and and that's what I did. Um, the, I guess the Texas Constitution is, is unconstitutional. My uh, understanding is that anything in the Constitution is constitutional because it is in the Constitution. Um, that's just kind of my interpretation of that. Um, but uh, you know, I think she answered the questions. I think she she'd obviously read all the judicial court cases. Um, that says a lot. I haven't read all the judicial court cases. I don't think you have here has. Um, you know, uh, obviously very knowledgeable about judicial type affairs. Yes, she did cite foreign court. Um, I did notice that. Um, I don't think that that's something to really hold against her. Uh, I don't think it was necessarily the question didn't ask for an, an American um, uh, response. Uh, and so I think it was something that's kind of outside of the box, more than something that was necessarily wrong. Um, she does have some leadership experience with being chairs of two organizations, um, and that was actually my next question was to ask her, kind of get away from the judicial side of things and ask her a question about uh, kind of the leadership role uh, of the third branch, and we didn't get time to, to do that. Um, so uh, I would encourage you, to, uh, I guess, to, to the vote for. Um, if anybody would like the floor. Um, right. uh, real quick, just adding on to what you said for leadership experience, if there's any questions, she is the president of the Pre Law Society here. I think that is a good qualification. Sounds good, seems relevant. That's all we got. Right. Do I see any debate yes. I just have one thing to say. I mean, I don't have anything against her, but Carrie Shashar is right. She did say she's a techie was and then said that her quote it said that her favorite quote from Portuguese was kind of pragmatic. So with that kind of context, that's the only and it hurts me. But that's the only thing I have to say. Was that I able to um Matt Bryson? Uh, Senator Bryson, um College of Science. I I just uh I have nothing against her, obviously, because um, she, I guess she's up there a lot because we went back to the uh, vote. Um, but I just, I felt very uncomfortable sitting here with, with a bunch of the, the um, I know a lot of the questions were very complicated and they went way over my head. But at the same time, there were, there were a few that I could sit there and be like, okay, I mean, you can give at least your opinion one way or the other on that and you should know enough about probably the Constitution already if you're planning on being the Chief Justice to get up there and make an opinion one way or another. So, and with that, I yield to, I guess I'll yield the floor. All right, so this is your speaker. I'll call previous question. 
Okay, uh, previous question has been called. The second division, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those who say nay. Okay, first time I'm going to the chair, the ayes have it. We will now move to a period of voting. Is there a motion for a ballot vote? So moved. That has been moved. Uh, so we will now take a ballot vote uh, by one person. All right, uh, if you have not had your vote, I will leave it here. You need any more ballots? <laughs> Okay. All right. Then this slide.